putting time and energy in there to help them. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean, $50 to some people is a lot of money, but the $50 and all the information and time I've given to them is really a really super deal for them. Um, so that's basically where I am, and I haven't really went over $50 since I started this. But the thing is, is once I started charging, this honest, honest to goodness, once I started charging, I started feeling better. It's it like I was giving and something was given back. I was always yeah. giving before, and I was never getting anything back. Now I'm giving something, and something's giving back. You know, look at the olden days when you go to the doctor, and you couldn't afford anything, but you'd bring a chicken, and he'd still look at you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or you bring some eggs, and he'd still look at you. You know, it's almost like the same thing, you know? You give, and you get, you know, you give, if you give to somebody, and they give you back, it's kind of like balances it. And I was way off balance. And that's what the problem was. It was to the point where I wanted to give it up. I didn't want to do it anymore. And every time I tried to give it up, I would have nightmares to get back into it. You know, it's like my spirit guys were saying, listen, Rick, you can't stop. You got thousands of more people to help. You can't stop. Right. I know exactly how you feel because I used to do that too. I used to spend hours with people and, you know, reading them and helping them connect to their loved ones. And it just, it drains you and people just don't realize. And, you know, how many times do they have to ask you, you know, it's like the same thing over and over. So, and you're very reasonable what you charge. And, you know, someone had told me once, you know, you go to a doctor, are they going to visit you for free? Are they going to help you heal for free? No, they're not. They're going to charge something, and there has to be an equal exchange of energy. Exactly. Exactly. And it, and it took me years. In my first book, I talk about charging. And it seemed like every time I tried to charge through my, my journey, I had somehow it just didn't work out right. Somehow it just fell apart. And I just thought it was meant for me not to charge until I got to a point where I was being kind of abused. I was being right. abused by the world. They were abusing me, and they were taking advantage of me, and, and I'm just a nice person. I, I have that in real life. People always take advantage of me because I'm a nice person. I'm always trying to do good for people, and you got people that will take advantage of you every day. Well, that's who it is. I'm not, I don't have a big backbone. I'm not a mean person. I don't scream and holler and curse. You know, I'm, I'm the kind of person that will run and help you out every time I can, and that right, right there, people take advantage of people like that. Yeah, they do. That's true. That's very true. Um, so when you do these readings, I noticed some of, some of the places that you went on when you were on, uh, Facebook, you, you went and helped out some paranormal teams. Is that right? Well, I was, you know, I can actually, yeah, I'll, I'll go with paranormal teams and actually go with them. You know, they, if they need me, need me to come. Um, I do a lot of private cases too. You know, they're having issues where the kids are getting hurt or something. I want to actually go there and see what I see here and feel now. One thing I can't do is I cannot clear energy out. I cannot, um, you know, there's an entity or spirit. And I haven't ran into an entity that people talk so much about demons and stuff. I've never ran into that. Um, so it's always been, you know, just, you know, the grandpa that's angry and mad that, you know, that we're in there or they're in the house that the people just did not want them to be there. You know, they just bought the house and the previous owners are still there. Their energy is still there, and they're just upset, you know. That's what I run into. Uh, I don't never run into anything that's ever touched me or hurt me like that. Nothing's ever done that. Whenever I go in there, and the thing is, whenever I get around it, the energy actually gets activated because of my energy. Um, so if you watch some of my actual shows, you'll see how the actual static comes on there, and the spiritual want to talk so much. It's crazy. It takes over the whole conversation live on the video. Um, so it, it's amazing. But, yeah, that's what I do. You know, I, I go out and I help whenever I, I do little small events here and there. You know, in this year, 2019, I'm actually contacting as many paranormal or actual just like ho- ho- uh, Holiday Inn, you know, places, banquet halls and stuff, casinos. I'm going to try to get into all these places if I can. I got an actual sponsor that's going to help me out to get you know He's going to fund me any money I need to get to these places. So I think that's positive. He's going to fund me. Now. And of course, I get him paying back, but he's going to give me up money up front, which is nice. Uh, so I'll be able to go anywhere in the country. So I'm going to start booking. He said I can book up to 30 events a year. He don't care. He's got the money to take care of me. So I think that's positive. So I'm right now contacting places all over the country. But the problem I'm having is with a lot of these paranormal places, man, they're so expensive. I can't mm. believe how expensive they are. 
you know, some are 600, some are 1,000, some are 1,200, some are 2,000. And I'm like, how can anybody, you know, basically you go there, you're giving all your money to the paranormal place. You know what I mean? So yeah. it kind of it kind of hurts, you know? I mean, so, uh, so I'm having a hard time there. But sometimes there's some places that are, you know, they'll do like $35 an hour, and that's actually pretty good. So what I usually do is I'll invite people. I'll charge a fee for them to come there. Then I'll pay the building what I owe the building. You know, wherever it is, uh, usually there's like three fifty to four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, and then uh, I will actually charge uh, you know people to come. Then they'll get a uh, free reading, and then I'll have some giveaways, and then we'll do a ghost hunt. Um, we'll do an EVP circle, and I'll read everybody and have their loved ones come through on the audio recorder. So it, it's an amazing experience, and every time I go out, I'm telling you, I change people. I change. You know, there's skeptics that always come out to my events, and I'm telling you, they walk away a believer. Sure. So, so you basically are setting up like a a uh, haunted tour or or just a in general ghost hunt to uh... yeah, ghost hunts and readings. I call it. You know, ghost hunts and readings, um, <laughs> and that's what I do. And and I make it kind of interesting for people. I might actually take something, an actual prize, and I will hide it somewhere on the place. You know, I'll hide a prize or two, and mm. they'll go through the whole building. They won't even pay attention because it kind of blends in with the actual atmosphere. <laughs> but I'll hide stuff, you know. I'll hide gifts and stuff out there, and they won't even pay attention to it. So um, so then I'll have them go through, and they'll, it'll be like a little ghost hunt. They'll be, but they'll be looking, you know, it's like an actual, uh, you know, uh, what is it called when you go hunt for stuff? Um, scavenger uh, hunt. Uh, yeah, yeah, like a scavenger hunt, and they'll go through the whole building. They'll be looking for it, trying to find it. And sometimes I'll have a fifty-dollar gift card there, or a twenty-five-dollar gift card, or I'll have something to a restaurant. So you know, I I want to give back. You know, if somebody comes there and they pay a certain fee to come here, I want them to walk away saying, "Wow, I won something." And usually I'll give away three or four books. I'll have them in there in the giveaways, sign copies. You know, you know, I'm not there just to take people's money. I'm there to actually have them have a wonderful experience and actually walk away with something positive. Sure. That's really great. Um, yeah. That's, that's actually kind of cool. Especially in the whole paranormal realm where lately it just seems to be about money. And oh, so, yeah. it, uh, that's definitely what it is. You know, the yeah, people uh, with the real heart get kind of pushed aside who are really doing something. So I'm glad you're out there. Right. Yeah, well, absolutely. thank you. I, I do have a question for you, and, and I, I'm, I'm wanting your opinion. Um, so um, if just say, for instance, you could remove a negative spirit and this family calls you. Um, you would would you think that you could put a price on that? I mean, how much money that you could you could uh, charge this family five ten thousand dollars maybe would would that be a ridiculous uh, thing to do? Well, I wouldn't charge them anything. You wouldn't charge. Them I anything. don't charge. If I had the ability to do that, I wouldn't charge them. Do I wouldn't charge them one dime. As a matter of fact, I had a friend of mine just contacted me tonight. And he said, "Listen, you know, I know you you know, you visit people's homes and you do readings, but you know, I have a family that would like you to come to their home. They feel there's an entity there." And to me, that's interesting because a lot of times people think there's entities there and really it's just a loved one trying to connect with them and they just don't understand. Yes. I did an actual thing uh, for a lady and she thought she had an entity there and I, I did an audio session. The woman came through on the audio recorder, said her name, said how she's connected to the situation, talked about the, the brother-in-law that she doesn't like and she still doesn't like him in the past life. Or in the next life, she just doesn't like him. <laughs> so that's what we're getting. We're getting this negative connection. And I said, listen, this is your sister that has passed is actually the one that's doing all this. And they, they didn't believe me. And they went to somebody else and paid thousands of dollars for somebody to clear their house. Oh, wow. So wow. what I'm doing with this other individual, I'm going to actually go there. And I said, listen, won't you just let me, I'm not charging this person. Now, now their now their kids are getting harmed. I'm going to go there and help them out. I'm going to go there and talk to them, communicate, see what's going on. I'm not the one that can actually remove this. because I have never been trained to do that. I don't even know how to do that. And that's what I do. I see, hear, and feel. I can tell you what's going on in your house, but I don't have the ability to do that. And if you do have the ability and you have the training, that's great, but I don't have that. 
I'm just straight up with people. I'm a seer. That's what I am. I see, feel, right. and hear things. Um, but, you know, I'll be able to go there. I'll be able to capture stuff, and I'll be able to try to figure out what's going on. And if I get stuff and I get there, and all of a sudden it's coming through and saying, I'm the devil, I'm a demon, I'm going <laughs> to kill you. Well, then there's obviously a negative energy there. Right. You know what I mean? But, but most of the time I'll come through, and all of a sudden I might hear another kid that's actually giggling or laughing, or I might hear a man talking about, well, you're in my house, I don't like it, you know? And then we'll do research, and I might even get their name. They might come to and say, my name's Stanley, on the recorder for the customer to actually hear. And then they'll do research, and they'll find out that it was, it's Stanley. Stanley actually owned the house, you know, 30 years ago, and he died here. So that's wow. what it is. A lot of people just don't understand. They're just, they're ornery, and they might slam the door on you. You know, they might smack you in the back, doesn't mean they're a demon. You know what I mean? A lot of people mistake that as a demon. They're just upset that you're there. And that's usually what it is. Right. It goes back to that old that old thing of um, how you are in this world is probably how you're going to be in the afterlife. <laughs> so. True. And, that's, uh, and I think that's exactly true because I don't know how many times I've actually come to the door and all of a sudden I, I start my recording before I even get to the door. And as soon as I walk in the door, I'm instantly getting the energies that do not want me there. And they're being very uh, right on saying, listen, get the H out of my house. I don't want you here. And they'll say my name. I don't want you here, Rick, because they know I'm coming before I can get there. Spirits know things before you even get there. Oh, they will know you. things ahead of time. Yes. They have the ability to connect and know, you know, like, you know, if I do a, like I'll do a remote viewing of a building. And then they'll want me to come out there. Well, the spirits already know because I already connected with that building through the spirits. They already know I'm coming out there. So they're going to say my name. They already know everything about me. So that's just how it is. So, And some of them are very intelligent. And some of them are amazing. And then some actually can't come through. But you might hear scratches or you might hear knocking or, or whistling or, you know, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, there's, there's so much out there that you know, we're all still learning. Every day we're learning. Oh yes, yeah. Every time we uh, we do a paranormal investigation on a place, or we may do a historical event, um, I learn something new every time we go, and uh, it just it just makes me feel better about myself, and you know, and and the fact that I'm a paranormal investigator. Um, the whole reason that I got into this was to help people, and um, oh, exactly. You, yeah, I mean, you know, there's, of course, we don't charge anything either. Um, we don't charge gas, lodging, nothing. And, uh, but I just feel so good inside whenever we have a positive outcome. And, uh, you know, I know that we, we help that family. And, uh, you know, so. Well, yeah, and that's, and that's what it's all about, you know. And, and another thing is, you know, a lot of people don't, you know, a lot of people still don't know much about the paranormal. They might think they know about the paranormal. They might be right. thinking that they're actually skilled paranormal investigators, but there's a lot going on that we don't know, and I don't know, but there's a lot, even on EVPs, you know, a lot of people, I used to actually take three recorders, and I would actually lay three recorders out, and I actually do an EVP session, and on one recorder exactly at one minute and one second, I would hear a man saying, I killed them, and then the next recorder, I would hear a, a female saying, um, saying something like, my name is Susan at 101. And then another one would be kids giggling and laughing at 101. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what spirits can do. They can actually pick one recorder and record their voice on that one recorder and not be picked up on the other recorders. So it's pretty amazing what they can do. And then I would actually play those recordings back. And then like on the man, I would actually play it back. And it would say the same thing. I killed the children. And then on the last recorder over there where the kids are giggling, I reversed that. And it says the three boys. So he killed the three boys. And in that actual storyline, there was a guy that actually killed three boys. Oh, wow. You know, that, ha that has to be sad whenever you, you come up to something like that and realize that there was a tra tragic event that caused that. So that's amazing. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's it's crazy stuff. And another thing about it is, you know, a lot of times these EVPs, you do a recording. This is what happens to me. I'll do a recording and I say, 
it says, I love 